green screen visual effects is very achievable all inside of Blender. Let's look at a super simple workflow to achieve some really cool results. Like always, you can download everything I use down below. First, obviously, we need to key out the green. Inside of Blender, we can go to the compositing tab and add a movie clip node with our footage selected. Let's make sure we're in the standard view transform under the render properties and color management. Also, we can go ahead and enable the node wrangler add-on, which allows us to hold shift control click to view a node. To get a better key, I like to prep the footage by increasing the gain a little. After that, let's add a keying node and pick select the green screen color. You can select the matte socket to view our key, and then we want to play around with the clip black and white. Try not to crush the values too much since we still want to have a nice edge. You can erode the edge a little to give us better lines, but again, not too much since that'll create problems. Now we have our guy keyed, but we can still see the outside still. To get rid of that, we need to go ahead and create a mask. So let's open the masking workspace and create a new mask. Now if we control click anywhere, it'll add a dot. We just want to go around our actor and create a mask. Make sure that the mask covers the entire actor throughout the clip, which you can also animate if you need, but I think we're fine for this shot. Now back in the compositing tab, we can add the mask node, select our mask, and then plug it into the garbage mat input of our keying node. We actually need to invert the mask, and now we're left with just our main actor. Final thing that you'll notice is that we still have the brightness increased, so we need to add a set alpha node with the mat going into our alpha, and then the original movie clip going into our image. Now if we duplicate our keying node and place it after, it'll remove some of the green spill. Finally, now that we have everything keyed, we just need to render out as a PNG sequence and make sure that the alpha is included. Now we're ready to get into the actual scene creation. Okay, so we can go ahead and open up a new project. Make sure that you have the import images as planes add-on, which will help us import in our background and our keyed PNG sequence. When you're importing in the PNG sequence, just make sure that you have the animate image sequence button checked. Once both are imported, we need to play around with the position so that the guy is in the foreground and our sunset image is far in the back. Now it's a good time to position our starting frame. So inside the camera view, let's go to view, navigation, and down to walk navigation. And now we can position the camera where we want to start the shot. You can also go inside of the camera settings and change the focal length to achieve a specific look. I went with a larger focal length of a 75 to really crunch the depth of my actor and the background, but go with whatever meets your needs. Now that we have everything in position, let's change some lighting. For the background, we don't want the image to be affected by lighting, so what we can do is go into the shading workspace and delete the principled BSDF. Then just connect the image directly into the surface of the material output. Now that's looking better, but there's still something off. That's because we are working in the wrong color space again. We have to go back to the render properties down to color management and change it from filmic to standard again. Filmic is great for CG, however standard is best for images and movie sequences. Now for our actor, he's looking a little dark, so let's go into the world properties and increase the brightness, and then change the color to match the background. Much better. However, he's still looking a little disconnected from the scene. That's where the compositing comes into play. Let's go into the compositing workspace. Go ahead and render an image just so we can see the result. Okay, so our guy is a little too dark, but if we try to correct it, it affects the entire image. To fix this, we have to separate our guy from the background. Don't worry, it's super easy, so let's check out how to do it. We're gonna go back into the 3D viewport and create two separate collections. One we can name background and the other we'll name guy. Of course, we want to place the correct objects in the collections, and now we have the ability to turn each of them off. Still, this isn't separating them into their own passes, so to do that, let's create a new view layer. So let's name the default view layer guy. Now for this one, we just want to turn off the background collection, so now we are only seeing our guy. If you see the world texture, you might want to go up to the render properties, film, and then turn on transparency so we have a clean alpha channel. Next, let's go up and create a new view layer, and we'll name this one background. All we have to do now is turn off the guide collection, and if we switch between the different view layers, we now have the two separated. Perfect, so now we can go back into the compositing tab, and we want to go ahead and duplicate the render layer node and change it to the background view layer. Again, let's render an image so we can see the result. Now if we just combine the two render layers using a alpha over, we can place a color balance node and it only affects our guide pass. Now let's match the two. So I'm gonna change the correction formula to offset power slope, and then change some of the settings so our guy matches to the environment a little bit better. In order to really blend them in, let's go ahead and add a glare node and set it to fog glow, and then we can decrease the threshold until we're happy. Much better, but I actually want more glow on my actor than the background. Easy. Let's duplicate our glare node and then place a set alpha after, and then using the alpha of our original guy render layer node, we can have a cutout of our guy with extra glare. 
finally, let's just combine our set alpha node back on top of our first glare node, and now we can see that we've added some glare to just our guy, which helps avoid blowing out our background. A great shot is all about the final 10% of time perfecting it, so I'll quickly go over some stuff I added to make the shot really stand out. First, let's boost the saturation and brightness to get more dynamic colors. You can totally do this in other programs, but here are the nodes that you can use inside a blender. Also, I kind of wanted to add some particles floating in the wind, so I created a new collection and placed a icosphere and plane object into it. Using the plane as a particle emitter and the icosphere as the render object, I made sure the start and end frame were beyond the frame sequence, and the lifetime was long enough to not despawn on screen. In order to get the particles to flow, I went into the field weights and turned gravity way down. The default velocity was fine for my needs, but change it to your liking. Of course, I created a new view layer just for the particles and combined it in the compositing tab using a alpha over like we did for the others. Next was animating the camera to go backwards and then tilt down to reveal the mountains. Remember, the less movement the better since we don't want to show that the actor is really a 2D cutout. Finally, I wanted the focus to rack during the shot, so I went into the camera settings and parented the depth of field focus object to an empty. That way, at the start, the guy is in focus, and then the camera racks to the background as soon as we start seeing the mountains. All that was left to do is set up the render to output as a MOV video and hit render animation. You can achieve beautiful results using this method and make sure to experiment on your own to find what works for you. Of course, I wanted to stick inside a blender for the entirety of this video, but normally I would recommend you use other programs for keying and compositing of this shot. I'd appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing if you made it this far as it would help me grow the channel. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see what you create in the future.